This is the fifth and final video in a series I'm doing on having a great sex life during and after menopause. And today we're talking about your libido, where it's gone and how to get it back. So stick around. Hi, I'm Dana Lavoie, an acupuncturist, herbalist, and the founder of Menopause Basics. And I talk to women all the time who are suffering from low libido during perimenopause, menopause, and after menopause. And the minute I hear that, I turn full on into my tonic herbalist self because this is something that is a beloved topic of tonic herbalists. So let me introduce you to the Chinese medicine view of libido and sexual tonics. Big picture, your sexual energy is really important in Chinese medicine, but while it's not as important as breathing or digesting your food or a couple of other things like that. So if you've been burning the candle at both ends and you're feeling depleted, run down, uninspired, and just kind of old and tired, your energy reserves are low. There's not enough energy energy for all the tasks your body wants to do every day. And one of the first things that doesn't get done is sending energy to your libido. So step one is to replenish your energy and fill, refill your energy reserves. And we're going to talk in a minute on exactly how to do this. Step two is to pay attention specifically to your yin water and yang fire energy and to make sure they're both being replenished in the proper proportions because they're both needed for healthy sexuality. One is the yang fire energy is the spark and desire and the other is the fluids and lubrication and strength of your organ orgasm. So you want them both. And as a bonus, uh, everything you do to replenish your yin and yang for your sexual energy will have overall anti-aging effects. So step one, replenish your energy reserves. It's like you have an energy bucket that is empty and you need to refill that bucket. But if the bucket has a big hole in the bottom, anything you put into it leaks right out and you can never fill it up. So the first step is to plug the holes in the bucket to fix the places where your body is leaking energy. And it's a little bit easier said than done, and it can mean changing some chronic bad habits. But hey, getting your libido back is a good motivator. So the most common energy leaks are stress. Now, stress is a fact of life, it's not going away. So it's just time to get real about stress management. Now, if you can, sure, reduce the stress in your life, but the biggest tonic herbalist secret here is using adaptogenic herbs to handle the stress better, to help you handle the stress better. Another common energy leak is inflammation or chronic infection. So anytime your immune system is working when it should be resting. Uh, so anything from allergies to inflammation to toenail fungus, any low-grade infection, figure out what it's going to take to get that taken care of. And again, adaptogenic herbs can help with this. Another common energy leak is an unhealthy lifestyle. So fix that. You want a regular bedtime and sleep cycle, good quality sleep, eating healthy food at regular intervals throughout the day, making sure your digestive system is healthy and practicing good deep breathing throughout the day and drinking enough water. If you're not sleeping, it's going to be really hard to refill your energy bucket and have enough energy left over each day for your libido. So get help to figure out what it's going to take to get you to start sleeping well. All right, so that's step one, plugging energy leaks. Now your bucket's in good shape. How do you refill the energy in the bucket? And can I just tell you that what we just talked about, like plugging those energy leaks, it's actually a really advanced topic. You know, the vast majority of people just go right to refilling the bucket and they don't think about the leaks. So this is pretty high level stuff that I'm sharing with you guys. Um, so so how to refill your energy bucket? First, getting enough hours of good sleep every night for sure is a big one. Like I said, eating nourishing food regularly throughout each day and keeping your digestive system healthy is really important. Deep breathing every day is important. These are the basic ways that you make energy. Rest, 
you get energy from the food you eat, and you get energy from the air you breathe. Now, in addition to those basics, the next step is superfoods. So libido enhancing recipes uh, and superfoods specifically for your libido and acupuncture can help as well. So some recipes that boost libido, libido are going to contain pungent spicy foods like garlic, onions, chives, cinnamon, ginger, peppers, coriander, and cardamom. These are all herbs that enhance your libido and spices. Um, arginine is rich in foods like eggs and meat, plus nuts and seeds, and it's very good for your libido. Uh, shellfish like oysters, clams, mussels, shrimp, and scallop, scallops are rich in zinc, also essential for making hormones. Walnuts, almonds, chestnuts, plus sesame and hemp seeds in particular strengthen the sexual energy. Uh, my favorite superfood is fresh ground flax seeds. It is so amazing. Uh, about two tablespoons a day is what I recommend. It contains, a, it's a vast source of something called lignans, which is a, a phytoestrogen that can help protect women from heart disease, bone loss, and vaginal dryness, and helps maintain a healthy ratio of testosterone to its cousin DHT. So that helps with your libido. Oats can help to free up bound testosterone, raising your active testosterone levels, which can increase your libido. Daikon, daikon radish is also a good for stimulating a lowering libido in men and women. And rose petal tea is known to be helpful as well. So this is all stuff you can start doing at home right now. The right foods, the right superfoods, and the right lifestyle are going to absolutely set the foundation for increasing your libido. See how much that helps, but if you still need more, consider herbs because there is a whole like thousand year old tradition of herbs specifically for this. And here's how they work. These herbs are herbs specifically to restore those energy reserves, your deepest levels of energy. And they're what we call jing or essence or kidney tonics in Chinese herbalism. And if herbs were an easy one size fits all thing, I thing I would absolutely tell you right here and now which ones to use. But it doesn't quite work that way. And here's why. You can get herbs that strengthen your yin, cool, watery essence or your yang, warm, fiery essence. And you really want to have equal both equal amounts of both. So some people might have plenty of yang, but not enough yin, and they want to take something that's like 80% yin tonics and just a little bit of yang tonics, but other me people might have um, the opposite, and so they want to take 80% yang essence tonics and 20% yin essence tonics. People who have even amounts of both want to take something that's a 50-50 blend. And in addition, something that I see a lot is as you start quickly adding more energy to your system with herbs, it's important that your energy is circulating freely. Because if your energy is stuck somewhere, when you add a lot more energy to the system, you can get a big energy traffic jam at that place where your energy is stuck and it does not feel good. So with herbs, what I always say is you want to build your energy and then move your energy, build your energy and move your energy in steps. Um, and eventually you will get to this sort of like critical level where your energy is so strong it's going to move on its own. But until you get there, you need to take Take care of both and a good herbalist will make sure to mix in herbs to your yin and yang tonics that help move your energy as your energy increases if this is an issue for you herbs are seriously powerful medicine and you will get the best results by far using them when they're customized for you so considering having a couple of consults with a good tonic herbalist to get you started on a long-term strengthening formula and then check in with them every three months or so to fine-tune your formula so bottom line there are so many things you can do to majorly improve your libido naturally Yay! Um, and if you're ready to get started, you right now you can download a free copy of my Menopausal Woman's Roadmap that will walk you step by step through including the most important foods and superfoods in your diet every day to help you your 
to help your body build and balance hormones naturally before, during, and after menopause. It also comes with an invitation to my free private Facebook group and an invitation to a free hour-long masterclass that I teach online. So I'm seriously ready to help you right now. Are you with me? To watch this whole video series with transcripts, downloads, extra notes, links, and more, be sure to check it out on my blog. My blog. The link is in the comments below. The first video, we cover what is vaginal dryness, where does it come from, what are the symptoms, and how to avoid doing the things that are naturally dis that are actively disrupting your natural lubrication. The second video is what you can do internally to combat vaginal dryness. The third video is what you can do externally to combat natural vi vi uh, vaginal dryness. So the best and worst lubes, moisturizers, and topical hormones, and the most important ingredients to avoid. The fourth video is with guest expert, Jane Steckbeck, who is a certified sexologist and expert in menopause. Uh, and she is going to give her very best tips and answer your questions. Uh, and then this video is on increasing libido. So we've got kind of like a complete coverage of the topic. And of course, I'm always here to help if you have questions. Uh, I'm Dana Lavoie, an acupuncturist herbalist and the founder of Menopause Basics. And thank you so much for joining me today and spending your valuable time with me. It means a huge amount to me and I'm always checking the comments below. And please be sure once you grab your free roadmap to share this video with a friend. So I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.